Now, some people ask me what emotional intelligence is, what heart health is, how did I learn, who are my mentors, what I study from, and one of my best mentors is my, my nephews, two of them. They're now currently eight and seven. But when my eldest nephew was three or four, there was an incident that really encapsulates everything that heart intelligence is all about. Heart health happens when you follow the one route that feels better to your heart and you cut through all the nonsense that goes on up here and you go straight for the best option. And this was never more wonderfully illustrated than one day when my nephew, he'd been at home with his parents, my sister, my brother-in-law, and like any family, they'd had, a, they'd had an argument. Unfortunately, the children had listened in, they were a little bit shaken, they'd gone through some very tough times and it was understandable. But in the height of all this high emotion, uh, when we get uh, in these high emotional states, it's sometimes easy to forget to do the right thing and we just do the first thing that's on our heads. And as my sister walked out of the door, she was going to come and stay with me. As she walked out of the door, my nephew went up to his dad and said, Daddy, can I have a hug? Now his dad was in a bit of a state at, the, at that particular point and, and, and didn't hug him. And off he went, he didn't really think about what would, this, what would happen as a result of this. And when my sister got round to the house, I, I usually stay up quite late. and. I went up the stairs that night and my nephew normally sleeps very, very well, but he was sat on the stairs with his head in his hands and I'd never seen this before because it was after midnight and it was most unlike him. I said, Connor, what's wrong? And he said, Uncle Lads, my daddy doesn't love me anymore. I said, what? How, how could you possibly say this? And that's when I found out that, about the hug thing. And in his mind, he'd associated his daddy not hugging him with him not loving him anymore. He was traumatized. He said, my daddy doesn't love me anymore, Uncle Ads. And I can't sleep. So I said, well, I, I was a bit stuck at first, and then I thought I'd just read a, a wonderful book by Neil Donald Walsh called The Little Soul in the Sun. I said, come on, we need to have a chat. So I sat down next to him. I said, have you heard of The Little Soul in the Sun? He said, no, Uncle Ads, I haven't heard of it. He said, well, there were two little souls up in heaven and one of the souls went up to God and said, God, I'd like to be the little soul of love. And God said to the little soul, well, everybody loves you here, little soul, so you can be the little soul of love. So the little soul of love happily goes on its way and the next little soul walks up and says, God, I'd like to be the little soul of forgiveness. And God says, well, yes, of course, you can be the little soul of forgiveness. And so, the little soul of forgiveness looks around and says, but God, everybody loves me. There's nothing to forgive up here. And at this stage, the little soul of love hears how traumatized the little soul of forgiveness is. And he walks up and he says, I know, I've got an idea. He said, why don't we go somewhere where we forget who we are? And I can do something so horrible that you'll be able to forgive me. But the only rule is that when I do it, after I do it, you have to remember who I really am. So the two little souls, they go to this other place, they forget who they are, the little soul of love does something terrible to the little soul of forgiveness. And there's this edgy period where they don't remember who they are. But of course, over time, the little soul of love remembers who he really is. And the two little souls realize and wake up. Or words to that extent. My little nephew was listening intently to this story. Wow, Uncle Lads, that's great. I said, yes, isn't it, just? I said, and who do you think your daddy is? He said, 
my daddy is a little soul of love. I said, that's right. And who do you think you are? And I'm the little soul of forgiveness. Now, in that moment, there were no questions, there was no uh, head stuff, there were no judgments. This felt good to Connor's heart, and at three years of age, he was able to really get it. This is heart health. This is going for the thing that feels the best, the thing that feels right. And when I saw him get it so incredibly there, I was overwhelmed, and this well of emotion started to go into my heart because although I told him the story, I'd never really, really got it in a way that he did. And there were tears welling up in me and I, I was sort of feeling a little bit overwhelmed at how quickly he'd taken this lesson in. And I said, Connor, there's going to be things in life that are going to challenge us. And if ever you have a situation that causes you a challenge, I'll always be there for you. <laughs> and Connor took a second and then he looked up to me and he said, and Uncle Ads, if ever you're in a situation that you need someone to talk to, I will always be there for you. And that is heart health. That is emotional intelligence. That is me and my mentor learning at what really works, at learning how to take a seemingly impossible situation that the head cannot reconcile and alchemize it into something that feels good for the heart. And Connor was then able to go back to his dad and tell him the little soul story. And healing began. Heart health happens from the strangest sources and everybody's here to teach you. On that note, I wish you a wonderful, forgiving time.